Alrighty, seems like everybody is good to go. Hello guys, thanks for joining us again, welcome. Alright, I see we had some really good pictures uh, of tulips up on the forum this week. It was really awesome, nice, nice work, great, well done. So I'm glad to see you guys enjoying the, enjoying the classes. Today is the pinnacle of our flower because we're going to add the water drops to it. Um, before we do that though, there's a little adjustment that I want to do to mine, which I haven't done in advance because I, it's a, something that's going to happen to you as you go along with some painting or the other, and I want you to know how to do it. And that's how to do small little color adjustments using a color wash. Again, as usual, just if you've got questions, type them in the chat box. Dennis is checking the chat box as we go along. So he'll relay the questions to me and I'll answer them as we go. All right, let's have a quick look. We've got South Africa, Georgia, Ontario, New Zealand, Newfoundland, another Canada. That's great, guys. Awesome. All right, let's go over here. <clears throat> okay, so what's happened is this little highlight of mine, I think it's just a little bit too bright. So what I want to do is just tone him down ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color just next to it and do a light little color wash over it. Now, last week... I didn't add any medium to my paints because I was in a hurry. I wanted to get painting, so my painting isn't 100% dry, so I'm going to have to be really careful. I'm going to take a small brush and then just a touch of the color next to the highlight. Just a small little touch. Before the show, I just took out my... Uh, Paints out the fridge as normal, and I'm still good to go. So, three weeks old paint is still perfectly, it's not even a skin on it yet. So, I'm going to take a small amount of paint, very little. You can, when you're doing a color wash, these little color adjustments like this, there's no medium in the paint. Um, take small amounts, you can always add more, but it's very difficult to lift, lift off. So, now I'm going to just Give it a light little color wash. So all I'm doing is laying down the thinnest little layer of color over that. So my original highlight will still shine through, but it won't be quite as bright anymore. When you're doing this, you have to be careful just to put it down in a nice even color. Luckily, this yellow piece here has dried quicker than the, than the orange. But all around it, I can, I can still see is glossy. So that says to me it's still wet. Given it a little color wash now, and that's given me taken away that very bright yellow, so I'm much happier with it now. Cool. <clears throat> Let's paint some water drops. <clears throat> to understand how to do the water drops, we're going to move over to the to the palette because I want to I want to first explain to you how we see the water drops. We've got our water drop, which we're seeing from the side. Our light is coming from the left-hand side. So when the light comes, it goes through the water drop because it's transparent, right? Until it gets to this edge over here. Over there, the light has got nowhere to go. So you can almost think of the light gets stuck over there. What's really happening is your light is reflecting over there. Now, because your light is reflecting over there, your shadow has nowhere to go except go and lie on the opposite side. So look what's happened. If this was a solid ball like this, then you would have had the highlight on this side and the shadow over there. 
But now you've got the highlight on the opposite side and the shadow on the opposite side. So that's one of the secrets of painting water drops. Then, because your water drop has got height, it throws a shadow over there on the table like that. Plus, because your water drop is wet, you get a little reflection of the sun in that area over there. Okay. So I'm going to first show you a completed water drop, and then we'll do it on our painting. So let's zoom up to that one over there. Okay, in this painting, our light is also coming from the left-hand side. So take a look what's happened. You've got your shadow here, and the highlight is now on the opposite side. You've got a little shadow over there. Now remember, we, always, we have chatted about the shadows before. They fade away. So see how faded that shadow away? And there's our little reflection to show that it's wet. So if you look carefully, you'll see it's basically three little shadings. Shading in shading in to make it look round and shading out to give him the height and a little dot for the highlight easy peasy no big secret there so now let's go and do it on our canvas the big question is what colors do you use when you when you're painting this so what I do is on the highlight side I would tend to use reasonably bright my, my bright highlighty colors. Let's go back to the palette. No special colors necessary. I'm going to use this one here. Now for that little highlight piece, I'm going to add extra white to it. Then I'm going to use one of these guys over here for the shadow color. As we move over in the flower to the shadow side, then I can't use that highlight anymore because it's not that bright on that side of the flower. So then I'd go down to say something like this or maybe a mix of those two for my for my highlight color and I'll stick with that for the shadow color just make sure whatever color you're using has got enough contrast to stand out then now we need to just go to the to the computer where you put your where you put your uh, water drops is really important so the first thing that we need to do is realize that just like people, water drops are lonely. They hate to grow alone, okay? So you always got to put your water drops down in families. So if I take a look at over here, I've got a little family. See, there's the dad. He likes McDonald's. See how nice and big he is? And there's the wife. She goes to the gym. Look how nice and slim she is. And they've got three kids. There's the new one, new one, and there's the, the brother and the sister. You see, they're different ages. They are, like playing next to each other, or they like playing with each other often. And little baby, he's, he, he likes staying close to mom. Here's another family over here. See, they're newlyweds. They still sit next to each other on the couch and watch TV at night. Here's little Mary. She runs an orphanage. So, look, she's got a whole bunch of kids over there. Here's a little group of kids playing in the street and here's some some students running around so there's just a to give you a little idea of the grouping if you do that it's a silly little story but this little story helps you to create random groupings if you don't do that you tend to put one here one there one here one there and then you get what looks like chicken pox so what I want to do is show you one of my paintings that I did, where even though I did do the families, I did my whole um, groupings wrong. Let's zoom to this side here. Yeah. I'm really giving Dennis a, a run for his money with the camera today. Let's pop this old painting. I dug it out of my garage. I've kept it. It's a stinky painting, simply because it's wrong. It looks terrible. But I've kept it. To remind me what not to do. Alright, so you see, even though I've done the families, it just looks wrong. And I'm gonna the reason is I never considered where does that water come from? That water either comes from a rain shower 
or let's say some mist that's, that's settled. So what would happen is your mist is, or your rain is going to settle from the top. So you're going to have lots of water drops on the top. So they're going to gather here until they get too heavy and then they're going to run down the side. Okay, so these little groupings that I've got over here are just too much. So if we can go back to our other, other example at the top. Sorry, I was just quickly checking, make sure you guys are still okay. <clears throat> so we've got our other example at the top. See, I've put most of my drops here on the, on the top edge. And then sometimes I put one, maybe one or two running down. Now the big secret is when you're doing these water drops, it's easy to get carried away and add half a million of them on your, on your flower. And believe me, it's easy because these water drops are so quick and easy to paint, you, you just get carried away. So you've got to keep putting yourself back and saying, hold on, hold on, just easy does it. So I've got one little flam family there little family there and there's a single dude and sometimes I'll have one little single dude just running down the side as well. So, easy does it. The water drops do take a little while to paint so I don't want to sit here and, and, and bore you with repetitive stuff. I think it's more important that you guys get the, get the theory and then from there you can take it. Let's just get a little bit of white on my palette. Okay, so when I'm doing my water drops, I'm going to take any old color. So I'll just take a middleish type of color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself the, the outline of the drop. Now another trick that I found is even though you'll find it in nature, that your water drops will get little corners and things. If you paint those little corners, it just doesn't look right. So, I always make sure I don't have any sharp edges on my water drops. I give them nice, smooth roundings. But now, obviously, water drops don't, aren't perfectly round. They're elongated and stuff like that. So, can you see that rounding over there? Yeah. Okay. They're elongated and stuff like that, so give them odd shapes. Just avoid those little sharp corners. Now that I've got my shape, now I can start adding in the highlights and the shadows. So for the highlight, here in the highlight area, in the sunny part of the flower, I'm going to take some of my highlight color and add some white to it. And that's going to give me a nice bright little highlight. Or something like that. Okay, we are you zoomed in now, Danny. <coughs> I'm going to put it on the edge like this. Directly opposite where the light is coming from. In other words, if my light is coming from that direction, this highlight would go and stand on the opposite side. Now what's really important is that you get this outside edge over here nice and sharp. Go back to our, our drawing of the water drop from the side, and I'll show you why. You see this little water drop over here? You've got that height off the table over there. So this sharp, so you can actually only see to there. This little piece is hidden. Now to show that little height over there, the secret is to get the outside edge of your water drop sharp. So don't be shy to even turn your canvas around to get that edge nice and sharp. Now 
nicely to halfway like that. Now I'm going to clean my brush, get all the excess paint off the brush. So I'll just wipe it on my kitchen towel. So now there's enough paint there. All we're going to do now is move that paint around. So you take your clean dry brush and just gently tap it on the inside. So what we're doing is we're basically creating a small little shading. And that little shading is showing us that the water drop is round. Just like that. Now you'll find here and here, so our light's coming from that direction, here and here, I tend to make it sort of fade away or the, let that shading become narrower, broader over there. What that does is it just helps me when I need to tie in my shadow side over here into the highlight side. Now I'm going to wash the brush because I need to change colors. So now I'll take a darker version. Let's get to the palette. So I'll take this middle dark that we had. I'm going to take some of that. Because we're in the highlight area, I'm not going to go very dark for the, for the shadow. So I'll use that guy over there. And now it's exactly the same thing, just on the opposite end. Make sure you get a nice sharp edge. Like that. And I thin him out to those two sides and broaden him over there. Again, clean the brush. You don't have to wash it when, you, when you're doing the shading. Just clean the brush. Just trying to get rid of the excess paint that's, that's on the brush. And we gently fade it inwards. When you're doing this fading, don't fade it in so much that you lose this little area of see-through, that little see-through area in the center. Because don't forget that is what makes your water drop look transparent. So you've got to have that little piece that's shining through. Now I'm going to go over to my shadow color and give my water drop some height. So I'll take my shadow color. Let's see where will our shadow be. If our light is coming from this direction, there it's going to hit the water drop there, 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 until it gets to there. See, it goes past the water drop there, and the same thing happens on this side. Hits the water drop, hits the water drop, until it gets to here, and it goes past the water drop. So in other words, my shadow can't go broader than those two points over there. When you're putting this shadow in, be careful of not losing that sharp little edge that you created for the highlight. If you do go slightly over the line, then come back afterwards and just re-establish that little highlight line there. So again, I've put down a little bit of paint and I'm going to clean the brush. I don't want to add any extra paint now. I just want to move the paint that's there, just move it around. Just light little, gently rubbing it on the, on the edge. Now the bigger your water drop, the longer your shadow has to be. Because, in other words, how, the higher the water drop is. So that's how you can control how big your, your water drop looks as well. The slower you fade it out, the higher your water drop is going to be, or going to look. You want to fade it out till eventually you can't see any line over there. I'm just gently lifting out those little marks that I made for you guys to see where does your shadow start and end. 
Now for the final little piece, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. You can also mix yourself a little bit of sky color with some white and blue as well. Now don't be too shy when you're doing this little reflection. Um, pick up quite a bit of paint because you've basically got one chance to put him in. Our light is coming from that direction over there. So the piece that's closest to the light is going to be the brightest, which is roughly around here. So put him down and give him a, a light curve to follow the outside edge of the, of the water drop. Now sometimes what I do, just to really give my water drop that final little brightness, is again I take a little bit of my, my white and on the highlight edge, right on this furthest point over here, I just lighten him up ever so slightly and I find that also gives me a nice little finishing touch to the to the drop. Guys just give me a, a feel for what is the, the quality like now that I've now that I've dropped it. Alright, is it better now? That's, oh, that's great news. That's great news. Alright, so we'll, we'll keep on at this one and let's, let's see how it goes. <coughs> okay, so that's the one variation of the water drop. That's the basic one. So what I generally do now is I put uh, two or three family members around him just to make sure he's not lonely. Now the next variation of the water drop is one that you'd find when you see it's on the top. In other words, no, you're not looking at it through the flower. Maybe we can go up to this top one over here. <coughs> the next variation on a water drop is these guys over here that you're seeing from the side. So there we can't quite do this little highlight shadow thing simply because you've got a, a different background. So. What we do there is we use a middly color and we give him a th very thin little outline to show us the shape. Then over here on the shadow side, we give him his little shadow shading and we add the little shadow on, onto the flower itself to give it its height and we add the reflection. So in other words, this little highlight piece that we put on over here is going to disappear because we don't see it over there. If you do have a very dark background then sometimes you are able to add that little reflection in so then the only difference is the little outline that you've had to add to to make the whole water drop visible. If you had a look at a real water drop it's probably not there it's just one of those little tricks that we have to do to I think I'll put mine maybe over here just one of those little tricks that we have to do as artists to make sure our water drop stands out. So get that line as, as thin as what you can. Remember it's just there to frame the, the water drop. Now I'm going to put my little shadow in. So our light's coming from this side, so in this case that's the closest to the light, so that side is going to be the darkest. Again a sharp little edge, I'm going to clean the brush, so you notice how often I'm having to clean the brush? Use lots of kitchen roll when, you, when you're painting water drops, and I think that's probably what makes them take quite a while to do, because you have to constantly be cleaning your brush. So I've got that over there. Now I want to change color, so I'm going to 
wash the brush and I'm going to pick up some of my shadow color which is this one over here and I'm going to add a small shadow onto the flower so I'll give him a line over there and I'll make him fade away in that direction over there And that lifts him up off the flower. Again, just fading him away. And then you can add a little reflection on him with your white again, or your sky color, to make him look wet. Just like that. If your background is dark, then you can add your little your, your, your reflected highlight. You can add that in as well. But like I said, I've got a light background, so even if you do put it in, you're not going to see it. The last variation is when your water drop is running down the side. So let's do him quickly. We'll do him around this area over here. Let's do that. <coughs> Let's pick up some paint and I can show you what, what it's going to look like. If you've got the side of the flower like this, and your water drops are running down here, now if I look at it from the front, that water drop's going to do something like that, right? But now because we're not looking at that water drop from the side or from the front, we're looking at it from the side, we've got to modify him a little bit to make him look like he's standing up. So what happens there is, let me take my roll of kitchen towel. Let's grab a new one. Can you zoom in on this? <coughs> if you're looking at a circle from the side, or from the front, you see you've got a perfect circle like that. The minute you see that circle from the side, so I'm going to start tilting it. See what happens? The height stays the same, but the width is gradually becoming less and less and less and less and less until eventually it's going to become a straight line. Okay. So we have to compensate for that because we're looking at that water drop from the side. So what we'll do is, if we see this water drop from the side, this piece here will flatten out a bit. So that'll go to around there, like that. And that little height over there would increase a little bit. So in the end of the day, we'd have a water drop looking like that. And you can immediately see you seeing him from the side, eh? So let's go and do that on the on the painting. See everybody's still good there. Okay, so first gonna get myself just that little bit of a height over there. Something like that. This is also why I, I like to wait for my water drops or my background to dry before I do the water drops. Because if you don't draw the water drop on perfectly, then at least you can gently lift him out. Again, just giving myself a rough little shape over there. That should do the trick. Now I can give my brush a wash. Now you see, at this stage, we're working on the, on the shadow side of the flower, so I can't go quite as bright as what I did with the, the first two water drops, because there isn't as much light on this side of the flower. 
So instead of using where I took my highlight color and I added white to it, it's going to be too bright for there. So at this stage, I think I'm just going to take some of the highlight color that we originally used for the flower and use that. So again, our light's coming from this side. There would be my shadow and there would be my highlight. You can immediately see he's more subdued, eh? And that's great. If you make him too bright, he's, he's going to stand out too much and he's not going to look natural. So I'm just fading him away towards the inside. It's a nice big drop. So I've been lucky. I haven't even had to wash the brush or, or dry it off. Sure, it fades away nice and even. Sometimes I even just use my finger to do that final little shading over there. That way I know there's absolutely no brush marks because fingers don't make brush marks. <coughs> mm. I think over there we can still stick with our, our middle middle dark one for the the shadow side of the water drop. I think you'll still have enough contrast to stand out. So now because we've got this little running piece over here, look what happens. I curve this in over there as though it's a normal drop. Like that. I think we'll have to go a little bit darker. So I'm, I am adding some of the, the darkest shadow color. making sure I get my nice sharp edge like that and now to get that running up piece you're just going to fade that up there so it almost forms like a little bit of a triangle there like that and now we fade him into the, the, the drop as normal That piece over there, what we're going to do to get that little running piece to disappear on us, <coughs> I'm going to fade this little line that I drew. I'm going to fade him away until he just disappears. And that gives you less and less height. Both on the shadow and on the highlight side. So it's just a small little variation where your oh, that's a little bright. So it's just a case of your rounding at the top just extends into a line and that line disappears on you. Now you'll also often find that you just can add one or two little dabs and dashes in that piece there. Just like that to give it a bit of a sparkle over there. Now I'm going to take my white, add the reflection on that. And then he just needs his shadow to give him the height. Now because I'm working in the shadow area, same as when we had over here, 
I'm going to take that main shadow color and add just a touch of blue to it just to darken him even more. See, because I need so little paint, I'm just doing little quick impromptu mixes on the palette. It's not necessary to go and mix up a huge pile of paint now. I think that should be fine. Now, because your height starts flat over there and he gradually gets more until he gets to over here where he's at his highest it really becomes important to do that little tapering away of the shadow now if you find you're battling to get these little sharp edges over here let me show you what you do when you pick up your paint you pick it up like this then you rotate your brush 180 degrees and you pick it up again and look what happens you get this lovely chisel point and that gives you super sharp lines for a short while and then every now and again just come back in 180 180 and then you've got your chisel point again and that's how you get those nice little sharp edges Here on this side, to, get, to give you that height, I'm going to make that line just gradually taper away until there's nothing. Okay, so I've got my paint down there. Now let's go and extend him or fade him away like that. And there you have it. Now you know the secret to painting water drops. All three varieties. All it is is three shadings and a dab of paint for the highlight. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? I think this drop here is still not standing out quite enough for me. So I'm going to go and just darken up the shadow side of here a bit more. That'll just help him stand out a bit, a bit better. Yeah, well, what I'll do is I'll... Guys, what I do is if Dennis does give me, um, read out a remark to me, then what I do is I, I repeat it. Again with this one here, I'm just adding that extra little sparkle on that furthest bright edge over there. So I've taken my highlight color and just added a little bit extra white to it. Same as before. So what I would do now is I would now continue just to add a few more families and, and, th and that would be it alright so I know Dennis has showed you how to sign your name but in case you haven't seen it I'm going to quickly do it again so you complete your water drops then when you want to sign your name what you're going to do is you need your paint really thin 
can you get in on this piece here on? It's now a little difficult because I've got all this medium lying there. I can't lift up the pallet or it's going to run off onto the table. But I'm going to choose choose a color that's... Let's just spread that out so that it doesn't run all over the show. I'll come back and scoop it together in a minute. Choose a color that you've already used in your painting when you're signing. Because if you're now suddenly going to use a brand new color for your, for your signature, it's going to stand out and that's going to become the focal point because it's, it's odd. Okay, So choose a color that, whatever you've got on your palette, that's going to stand out on your painting. Now when you do sign your painting, there's a few things you need to sort of keep in mind. The first thing is, what are you going to sign? Are you going to sign your name? like Nolan Clark, or you're going to sign just your first name, or you're going to sign just your surname, or you're going to use a, a pseudonym, maybe Peanut, something like that. So think of these kind of things now, in advance, before you start getting too far down the line. I didn't. Nobody gave me this little, this little bit of advice in the beginning. So for a long time, I signed in you know, in block letters, N dot Clark, and I'm not very good at doing those block letters. So I found that all my paintings that I'd signed, it looked like a little kid had signed them. It was pathetic. Um, I'm just trying to see if I've got still somewhere. No, I don't. Yeah, here's the Dennis will zoom in on one where I, where I did sign like that. That's my very first painting there. Okay, have you got it? Yep. Okay, so I, I used to sign my name like that. It looked absolutely terrible. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I don't think it differentiated myself enough. So what I did was I one night I, I had a nice quiet class. So I took a huge sheet of paper and I started just playing with different ideas of how can I sign my name until eventually I came to my existing signature so my students that were in the class had a, had a strong hand in helping me design my, my signature. But now, let's zoom down to here. Look what I've done. Yeah, let me get a busy contortionist well, here. Well, zoom in on any one of these guys over Yeah, here. up top there. Or over yeah. there. It's fine, yeah, okay. Now you, you can zoom in on any one of my paintings <laughs> now. Um, here we go. Okay, so there we go. What I've done is I've created myself a signature that's distinctive. And you can walk into any gallery. If you see my signature, you're instantly going to know it's me. So I can paint absolutely anything. You'll find that a lot of professional artists tend to paint only one thing. Now, yes, it is because they, they're known for that and that's what they know sells. But often it's a case of they, they've just got stuck where they have to paint that kind of thing or the people don't recognize their painting. So get yourself a really distinctive signature as soon as you can so that when you do start selling your paintings, immediately the guy can walk in and it could be absolutely anything. That little name is your little branding mark on the painting. Now I sat with a problem because I didn't do this thing in the beginning. I found that when my painting started to sell, I had old paintings that people saw them, they didn't realize they were mine. So to, to overcome that, I had actually had to go and rub out my old name. Maybe you can zoom in on this one over here. You see over here, I actually had to go and rub out my name. I put a, a big layer of, with a, with a knife, I put a layer of paint down and then I signed my new signature over it. So, yeah, my old paintings look a little bit odd because they've got that on there, but I, I had no choice. Otherwise, people didn't know they were my paintings. Quite bizarre. So the sooner you can get yourself a unique signature, the sooner you make life easy for yourself. All right, so now let's get back to actually signing the damn thing. <coughs> when you sign your painting, Traditionally, we sign in the corners. You obviously, you don't have to. You can sign up the side here. Yeah? You can sign up the top. It doesn't matter. It's your choice. Remember, you're an artist. Be creative. It's fine. But when you do, whenever you do decide to sign it, you do need to take care of 
if your painting is going to be framed or not. In other words, if I go and sign my name over here, I may frame it or sign it too close to the edge of the, of the canvas, so when you frame it, it's going to hide a portion of my signature. Because on the, on the frame, you've got what we call a rebate. Yeah, now I've tied up all my... <laughs> You've got a little rebate. Okay. You've got a rebate over here like this. So when you put your painting in, it's that little piece over there, which is usually five millimeters to one centimeter. That's how broad that's, that rebate is. That piece of your painting is going to be lost behind the frame. So I always tell the guys, sign at least at least two centimeters in. Now to sign your name, pick up some medium and work some of one of the colors in it and make sure it's like an ink. You need an inky consistency. It's one of those things where you're going to have to just play a little bit to get the right consistency for for you because you get to a point if you make it too thin then your paint actually starts becoming transparent and then your name gets lost anyway so judy says my signature looks like a man with two long ears <laughs> Uh, I've had lots of people say all sorts of funny things. It looks like 2002 on, on its side and the, the two big ears. I like that one. All right, so let's go and sign our name. Now, because your brush is floppy, you've got to use a thin little brush. So I've picked up mine with a, with a chisel point. Because your brush is floppy, you'll find it doesn't do circles very well. So when you do your circles do them in quarters so I'm going to do that little piece over there and then that little piece over there now I need to do an O so I'm going to do there 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 like that okay I'm signing my name bigger than what I normally do just for, for your guys' sake. Just so you can see, better see how I do it. Okay. <clears throat> cool, well done guys. You've, you've finished your first painting and it's looking really, really good. So if your first painting looks like that, just imagine what it's going to look like in 5, 10, 20, 100 paintings from now. Awesome stuff. Alright, I'm going to put this painting aside and show you what we're going to do next because I'm sure you absolutely aching to see what we're going to do next. So what I've done is I've done a little thumbnail painting for me to reference from. And it looks like that. You guys asked for some water and you asked for mountains and I wanted to do a sunset. So there we go. All in one. What do you guys think of it? And then while, while we add it, I'm going to take two seconds and just check if there's any questions. So if you've got any questions about the, about the flowers and the water drops. Just shoot. Let's see if we can quickly answer them before we go on to the next painting. Cool, Smokey says, I'm aching, I'm super excited. Travis says, it looks great, can't wait to try and paint it. Okay, any, any questions about the, 
about the tulip before we before we go on with the the landscape guys Okay, Smokey says, would you consider lightening the center of the drops? Water is a magnifier. Um, Smokey, now I like to leave that little center piece transparent because otherwise you don't get the transparent piece. Um, the transparent see-through look of the, f of the water drop. What I do do is, let's go back to the, the, the water drop. Let's put that one over there, you're still sopping wet. Remember what I did over here? I came back and I lightened that little furthest edge. That's what I would do to get that to get that um, magnifier effect. Okay, Anna says some sign paintings on the left hand side, some on the right, which is best. Anna, now you know what I do. Um, it all depends where I've got space for it. Sometimes you'll find this piece here, let's say you're used to painting on or signing your name on the left, this section here could be too busy to sign your name, it just simply won't stand out. Then I'd sign it on the right. Sometimes if your painting is a little heavy on this side, you can use your signature to balance it out again to get that, that balance. But yeah, you can sign your name absolutely anywhere. There's no hard and fast rule of where you have to sign your name. There's a, I promise you, nobody's going to give you a, a black tick against your against your name if you have signed it wherever you want to. Sign sign it where it fits best. All right, let's see. Smokey says, I think the drop would add more intense light. Yes, by adding that little extra little last highlight that I was chatting about, that gives you a more intense light. you just got to decide how much more intense you want to go because it depends on which side of the flower. If it's really on the bright side of the flower in the highlight area, then you can go really intense. You can eventually end up with just your sky color in that, that final little area. If you're on the shadow side of the flower, then you can't go too intense because then it's not going to look right. Uh, paper bag says, cause a water drop is transparent, wouldn't there be another highlight on the inside of the bubble, opposite to the highlight? <laughs> um, yes, that's that little extra piece that I've just explained. It's pretty much the same thing. Sometimes you do find there's a little line and stuff. Um, it all depends on how the water or the light is reflecting off that water drop. Um, the way I've explained to you now, you can do. You don't need to see any water drops to to um, to reference from. You can do these ones out of your head just like that, and they look absolutely natural. I find the guys come up to my painting and they they actually touch it to see if it's not real water. Ella says. Please explain what happens to the background in the drop when it lands partly on the leaf or in a crevice. Um, Ella, nothing happens to the background. Remember, your water drop is transparent. Um, so find where is that little highlight and where is that little shadow in the water itself. And once you put that in, the background will automatically take care of itself. Because remember, your water drop is transparent. I hope I've answered your question there. Okay, any last questions there, guys? It's a pleasure, Ella. All right. If there are any more questions, type them in. I'll, I will get to them. I think let's move on to our landscape.